Hey guys, so it's been a little while since I updated you guys on the schedule and the plan and so on. At the time, uh, we were talking about how things were getting messy because there was too many videos per day and various playthroughs and so on. We're getting alternating day slots where like Yakuza and Berseria and Neo and other games were all alternating on separate days because that was a big... It was just a big mess where more games are added, then you can't do that many videos per day. It's just too much to handle, so then you put them on alternating days, but then that means that they last for like four months, and then when they shouldn't, and stuff like that. So, first I restricted ourselves to six videos per day. And then, as those things with the alternating schedules finally got finished up, where one of them would finish, then the other one would become a full day thing, and that'll that's all resolved. Now, Neo is done, Berseria is done, whatever other games were happening back then are done. Uh, Yakuza is having its finale today. Yeah, today. So that'll be the end of that. Boom. That entire slate, that, that entire complication of schedule is now resolved, and that's good news. And the uh, six videos per day is doing really well too, because it's it's good to it's good that it's helping me restrain how much uh, needs to be done each day, so that it's more manageable. Uh, it's actually you actually went through the test lately because. Over the last few weeks, I've had a lot of time engagements with uh, family birthdays and various like trips to go on and uh, dealing with like a bachelor party, not mine. Uh, then of course like weekly trips to my hometown to record uh, sad games videos with Andrew. And then of course, uh, Wander suddenly springing a D&D campaign on me and a few other things going up here and there along the way. like. I've had a lot of time engagements lately, and despite that, I've been able to keep up with eight hours of sleep uh, uh, per day, and I have not missed a single video during this period of time. The only real downside with the, sh the sheer extent of Twitch I've been busy lately is I haven't had time to edit any more Dark Souls 3 co-op for probably been a week or two now. That'll be back again soon. The goal was to have them be like every day or every other day or something like that. But really what it comes down to is I need to wake up in the morning and be like, okay, I'm ahead of schedule so I can work on Dark Souls today. And so whenever I'm ahead of schedule enough for that to happen, it'll happen. And I think it should happen fairly often whenever I'm not too busy with with like life stuff. Uh, this has been an unusually busy couple of weeks, so I haven't had time for that kind of thing. But seeing how my schedule's managed to maintain itself despite how busy I've been lately shows that Whenever I'm not particularly busy, it should be super manageable by compar by comparison. And so, now it's time to move on to the next phase, because now it's time to think about how I want the schedule to work now that that complication of alternating video days is done, and Yakuza's four-month reign is over, and, uh, and other games, and so on. Like, games that just were here for far longer than they should have been, which isn't to say that the... That anything about the game themselves, but just the fact that, like, episode count versus day count, like, four months... For 70 ish videos that that should only take like just over two months not four like that's the problem with alternating video schedules is it makes the series just never die when it should have been finished a while ago uh now that that's done i can sort of recombobulate things a little bit so let's talk about what the new state of those six slots is because it's going to be a little different and more defined because previously i only had a few things defined and then everything else was just kind of whatever especially since that since at the time it was whatever i was busy with at the time and it just stayed that way so, one of my goals is to reduce the amount of AAA, AA, long-ass games I play. Not remove them. They're still going to be like half or more of my daily video schedule, but I want to just push it back a little bit to give us a crevice in which we can actually play uh, some of the small, smaller or more interesting or more varied and stranger projects and stuff that I, that I often really enjoy doing too. So, it's to, the idea is to give us another, a better balance. So, first of our six slots, of course, is Patreon. Obligatory. That Let's get that out of the way, because that's just always there. Uh, those that don't know, I have a Patreon. Patreon.com slash SebastianSB. It's the, there's a link in the description of every video. Uh, people can choose to support me, whatever amount they want. It's like subscribing to World of Warcraft or a magazine, except you choose how much you subscribe to with... And it's entirely voluntary, and you can stop at any time and not lose access to the videos, because I don't keep secret videos or anything like that. Uh, not entirely against the idea of doing it. Uh, it's conceived... I've, I've, I've toyed around with the idea of, like, what if I do, like, Patreon-specific Q&A that's not necessarily exclusive from 
the public Q&A, but like just a little Patreon feature where they can ask me questions or something. I'm thinking about stuff like that, or maybe even like behind the scenes-ish stuff that's really minor, but the reality is I don't know if I'd ever have time to make Patreon exclusive stuff, but definitely not Patreon exclusive Let's Plays. So the video game, the video content that everyone came here for in the first place is never going to be, I don't have any plans to make that Patreon exclusive at any point. The way the Patreon works is that people who subscribe to $15 a month or more can nominate games uh, whenever it's time to pick a new game, and then everyone who subscribes at any level, all the way down to $1, can vote on the list of games nominated by the other people. Lately it's been like a list of like 15 games being nominated, I think, by the larger tier, and then everybody else throwing in their like 300 votes, basically, and then games come out at the other end. Uh, right now, the game is, is Morrowind. The Elder Scrolls III Morrowind, which might be around for a little while. And then, uh, the moment Morrowind is done, another game gets uh, nominated for, and nominated and voted for, and it just happens then. It used to be monthly, but that was too weird and restrictive for a Let's Play series, because games aren't really conveniently exactly a month long. They're either shorter or longer on a regular basis, and it was too restrictive and awkward, so... I did a vote, and people chose to go with the picking a new thing when the last thing finishes. So that's what we're doing with Patreon now. Uh, so you can subscribe to that if you want to, but it, either way, I just like to, whenever I bring it up in a video that's not a Let's Play, I like to explain it at length just so that people don't ha people know what the hell's going on, basically. Uh, next slot is the indie pr uh, slot, which many of you are already uh, familiar with. I'm changing its meaning a bit. You're noticing I'm just calling it indie and not indie puzzle or whatnot. And that's because... Uh, the original idea was to have it be a slot for like indie and short games and puzzle games and so on. And that got weird, especially since I play games blind. So like one of the big cases was probably a night in the woods. Indie, yes, not short and not a puzzle game. I think I was, I want to say it was like 45 episodes long or something like that. It was like a month and a half for an indie game, which is bravo. Uh, making a game that long without making it feel like you're stretching it thin. Uh, it's really creative use of resources and so on, but uh, there's definitely it's hard to Find something for the indie slot that pleases everyone and what everyone wanted out of that slot in the first place And so I'm adding another slot which is for puzzle and adventure games So indie will continue to be a catch-all vague slot for just me chugging through all the indie games I want to get through which can have massive variants they can range all the way from the di uh, the Diary of Edith Finch, that's not what it's called. Uh, what Remains of Edith Finch, like walk around narrative games, or it could range to like Shovel Knight and action indie games and other, other things. Generally the goal is to play shorter games and so on, not RPGs in that slot, but you know, the vague umbrella of indie. And then, But then the third slot is puzzle and adventure. Why both? Because the, the it's hard to define puzzle game exactly, an adventure game exactly. Like we can generally agree that King's Quest, especially the original King's Quest games, is like an adventure game. And Portal is a puzzle game. But once you start getting in the middle there, and you start talking about games like, uh, what do you call it, like, uh, like Abduction, or The Witness, or Myst, or so many other games, the exact boundary between indie and puzzle, uh, I mean between puzzle and, and adventure game gets really weird and hard to define. And frankly, generally it's just, hey, let's go around and solve puzzles, and the meaning of the puzzle can be so variable that I'm just doing a catch-all, basically. Because they're all reasoning puzzles, but they're very different puzzles. Like, uh, the room is like searching around mechanical puzzles. This thing goes in that thing and fits in their thing, and oh, I think I remember a place where that would go. Uh, whereas uh, Shard Light would be a game where it's like, oh, I'm going to talk to some people, learn about the world, find some objects, and then figure out how those objects can solve problems that make us go forward in time in the story. Whereas puzzles like Portal are like, I'm in a room. Here's my goal. How do I get to my goal? Uh, what if I put this thing there? Nothing. Nope. That. Yep. Like a physics puzzle stuff thing. Like that stuff's all over the place. Like there's a lot of meanings to puzzle games. So I'm just making that a big, vague catch-all, just like how it's always been, because my, in my playlist section you'll notice that I, I list in, uh, puzzle and adventure together, because at some point I found it impossible to tell one from the other. So that's what we have for the first three slots. There's the Patreon slot, which is the rotating game that Patreons choose, uh, the Indie slot, which is the rotating slot for Indie, <laughs> and Puzzle slot, the puzzle, the puzzle Adventure slot, which is for puzzle and adventure games that 
are usually indie games, but don't have to be if Valve feels like putting out Portal 3 or some other developer feels like surprising us, uh, and so on. Uh, so that'll help me get that to be a more consistent thing, because a lot of people like the puzzle-y type stuff, but it's hard to find a consistent output for it without squashing out all other forms of indie games. So now, they, the, now there's a slot for each of those things, and I'm happy with that arrangement, I think. Uh, then there's the last three slots. They're all the same slot, which is my vague AAA, AA, RPG slot. It can be any of those things, it can be all of those things. Uh, it's where I would play a game that's just from a AAA developer, like say, the sequel to Shadow of Mordor, if I wanted to play Shadow of Mordor's sequel when it comes out, or Prey, and stuff like that. Uh, or like stuff that's not specifically, necessarily, a RPG at all, but just like a big developer thing like Alien Isolation and stuff. Uh, then of course RPGs. It can, uh, that's pretty obvious. Dark Souls, Dragon Age, and so on and so forth. The JRPGs. But it will probably also include, in this slot, indie RPGs that aren't going to be over in a few hours. Like, uh, something, like, more along the, uh, territory of, like, Masquerada, or, uh, Tyranny, and stuff like that. Uh, these things that, on some definitions, might be AA, might be called indie, I'm not really sure, but ultimately, they're the expansive games. So, you can almost think of these three slots as being indie games, and, I mean, these three slots as being long games and AAA games, basically. This ranges everywhere from Dragon Age to Doom 2016, for example, if I so choose to play it. So, that is basically just how I define what my normal slots were like once I remove indie and puzzle from their definition. Because that's that kind of just describes the general content I play on this channel, the, the Zeldas and whatnot. Uh, the goal was just to try to peel it back a little bit so it doesn't cover the entire schedule. Because until recently, uh, those slot, those games take, took up the entirety of my schedule. And it was kind of exhausting because I would want to get into a certain indie game here and there and I wouldn't have time, not just because I couldn't give it a schedule slot, but because the, ga the existing games uh, are just so long. Uh, even when they're not RPGs, a lot of... Uh, a lot of AAA games are just getting very, very long. In fact, in some of them, you'll talk, you'll hear me talking about the games basically being padded and bloated in some of the cases. Not all cases, but some of them are overlong just for the sake of it, because duration is seen as a, as a mark of value nowadays. So a game being longer is worth seen as being worth more money, which means that there's a pressure for uh, people asking sixty dollars for their game to make the game longer and longer so that they can say on the box, this is an 80-hour game, which is usually not true, but sure, and so on and so forth. So that's the basic setup. There's also the multiplayer nebulous thing. I don't, once again, not counting that as the main six slots. It just kind of comes and goes. Uh, I generally go over to Andrew's place once a week or once every other week to record, and some nebulous amount of recording with Wanderbot and Bird happens online, where lately we've been doing like two hours of Factorio every single night, but that's kind of an anomaly. Sometimes we play World of Warcraft with Wander and Shell, so on and so forth. All that stuff is just nebulous stuff that comes and goes and is scheduled how it's scheduled, and so uh, you'll see additional videos usually first thing in the morning of, of my multiplayer stuff when it exists and when it doesn't exist. And if it pauses midway through a series, it's probably because we just haven't recorded lately, and it's just the complications of scheduling with multiple people and so on, so that's why... That's usually what's going on if a multiplayer series just sort of pauses midway through, uh, and so on, because you have to wrangle everyone to both be in one place at the same time and play that specific game, which not everyone always wants to do, and so on. So that's the basic setup. Patreon slot, indie slot, puzzle adventure slot, and then three slots dedicated to what is basically the general content that my channel usually covers, the big RPGs slash AAA games that everyone's asking to play and so on. Uh, on the topic of what happened recently, uh, you guys, I, I put out a poll for the Prey 2017 versus The Surge. A, one of them's a AA RPG from the people that made uh, Lords of the Fallen and Venetica. One of those is a better sign of quality than the other one, probably, because Venetica, Venetica looks like a Divinity 2 reskin. Weird. Uh, and, the, and the other one is a weird thing that was supposed to be a sequel, then it became a spiritual successor to Prey, then it stopped being a spiritual successor to Prey and just became a spiritual successor to System Shock. <laughs> yeah, that got really weird, and then they still called it Prey for some reason. Oh well. Uh, so, that 
I don't know how often that will happen. Oh, by the way, the results. Uh, they were tied for a very long time, and then eventually Prey pulled ahead by a pretty sizable margin. It was like over the course, of, like there were there was about almost a full 24 hours where they were almost tied vote for vote, which was getting weird actually. And then eventually, uh, more people noticed it, I guess, and those people that were later uh, trended more towards Prey because it actually pulled a bu- pulled ahead by a significant margin over time. And so we're playing that right now. Uh, I might do that more often. I might not. Uh, I don't think I'll ever really do polls for indie and puzzle games, generally. Uh, I pretty much usually have a good idea of what I want to play, and I've got a big old whiteboard covered in text that just has sh- stuff written on it of all these games I may or may not play in the future. But uh, I could see polls happening in the other three, the three big slots from time to time, just as a... So- basically just as a basic practicality thing. Because, obviously, when a game like, uh, say another Dark Souls game comes out or something, that, like, I'm just gonna play it, obviously, because that's just what I'm into. So when I'm really passionate about playing a specific thing, then it's just gonna be what I play. But, because I'm restricting it to three slots, and because I still am holding true to my goal of finishing games, uh, but I'm also restricting the videos to six videos a day, which means that I'm not always playing games right at launch, and so on and so forth, uh, I may do polls just to try to gauge interest, because there's a certain thing where just you just can't play everything. Games are so goddamn long now. <laughs> they're so long and there's so many coming out every single day. So I'll be, it, there's no, I don't think there'll be necessarily a real pattern to it, but whenever I have like a list of like two or three games competing for one slot in the like AAA slash RPG-ish range, and I'm not sure which ones to go with, I might put up a poll gauging general audience interest because if it's a landslide one way or another, that's generally a good way to go. I don't necessarily promise to always do exactly what the polls indicate, but if I'm... I guess if I'm putting up a poll in the first place, I'm probably not that opinionated about which way to go in the first... Anyway, so this was the first-ish case of that, which was a direct comparison between Prey and Surge. Might happen in the future, because just while I'm finishing the current docket of games, which is currently uh, Zelda, Mass Effect Andromeda, and Prey are like the three triple A-ish games right now. Uh, by the time I finish the existing docket of games, I'll be like, okay, while I was doing that, like four games came out that you guys might want to see, and maybe I'd do a poll between those to help try to sort out demand, because you gotta be a little picky and choosy about what to put in slots when you're when you're sectioning off like this. Meanwhile, they'll all just be binging through all these Indian puzzle games and stuff for as long as it goes. We'll see how long the puzzle slot lasts. Uh, one of my concerns about making it its own slot is that there's only so many puzzle games, they usually don't come out very quickly. There's definitely a decent number of, in- of adventure games, so... I'd... I'll probably go through my current docket of puzzle games and adventure games that I just already planned on playing, then go through, like, a backlog of things like, say, the Myst series and maybe even all the adventure games by Wadget Eye. Is that the name of the company? People that made Shardlight, uh... And what's it called? <laughs> Shardlight. That other game somebody keeps asking me to play during the Patreon polls. They make old school looking side scrolling. I can't think of any of the names right now. I feel bad. Uh, I'll probably go th- maybe even through the backlog of the people that made uh, Samaros, which is the Machinarium and Botanicula and so on, like and stuff like that. I'll uh, it'll last a while. But I'm only, I mostly have a backlog because so many have been made in the past. But at some point, I think it might dry up, so we may have to do a rescheduling. I guess planning that sp- so, so that far ahead is kind of pointless, considering how often the schedule might change. But anyway, this is all tenuous, and we'll see how it goes. Uh, this is my plan, just making it clear to everyone in my long, rambling way, that for anyone who likes to hear these details about how this is all planned out, now you vaguely know how the schedule's working, and so on. The way that I've organized these slots in the way of, that I've said them in order does not necessarily pertain to the order in which that they will uh, be organized throughout the day, necessarily. Well, the multiplayer usually goes first thing in the morning, but everything else is just where it falls in my daily schedule. But if it comes out a certain time of day, it'll probably usually come out that certain time of day unless I'm running behind on uploading that day or something like that. So thanks for listening, this has been an update, and the video you're watching in the background, for those that are wondering, is a video called Every Game I Played in 2016. It's exactly what you think it is, it's Every Game I Played in 2016. I uploaded it like 
six months ago. I also did one for every play every game I played in 2017, when at the beginning of 2016. I'm sorry, at I did of every game I played in 2015 at the beginning of 2016. Uh, decent videos to watch if you just want to know about my backlog of of finished playthroughs or games I dabbled in, because it also includes Let's Tries, where I just do a one-off video real quick. Uh, a lot of content. <laughs> I've covered a lot of content over the last few years, so if you want to watch videos like that, uh, you can check those out. The link will be in the description, and that's like a video guide, basically. It's like a trailer for my channel. You, uh, In fact, it is the channel trailer on my channel, if you see it in incognito mode, where you're, where you're not subscribed, or if you're just not subscribed, apparently. <laughs> uh, it's just a quick like five to ten second clip of each game I played that year set to music from games that are featured in the video. Generally when it switches music tracks, the song the video that you're currently watching is the game that the song is from, usually. And so that's pretty much the trend across the board. Uh, thanks for watching like always guys, and I will see you next time. Well here we are again. It's always such a pleasure Remember when you tried to kill me twice